in our society today, a lot of youth from average family thinks they can't have big dreams and big aspirations. Welcome to another exciting episode of Dream Big and Think Bigger. I'm your host, Hilda Kenneth. And today in the studio with me, I have Prince Utibe Etuk, popularly known as Pizo Etuk, and he's an entrepreneur and a musician. You're welcome today. Thank you for having me. Okay. What was it like when you were growing up? Actually, growing up for me was like a normal day thing for every ghetto kid. You play as a ghetto kid. <laughs> you get to roll in the dust and whatever it is you have to do as a ghetto kid. But as a ghetto kid, I always had dreams as well. So it was a normal thing for me being a ghetto kid and chasing a dream. So that's what it has always been for me as a kid. Okay. So what was the culture like where you grew up? You know, for an acquired child like me who grew up in a reverse environment, we always had Ikwe people, Calabari people. Though my mom is from Calabari, so I actually grew up around the river area. So we had river culture all associated with whatever we do. Get it? So most times people see us as equate children and that's what it is. But so there was no time you felt like you were left out? No, I've always felt like a potato boy, full blooded potato boy. So even till now, I still feel like a potato boy more than an acquired boy. So you get it? So I'm more like a potato boy. So I feel the vibe of being a potato boy more than any other thing. So how has the society affected your dream? I would say in so many ways. So many ways. Being an average kid as we <coughs> the thing is like actually going from an average home in the society where you have less or nobody supporting your dreams. You get it. You just have to Fight for yourself, get inspirations from bigger people up there just to keep yourself going, not like anybody's actually pushing you or anybody's actually there to support supporting you financially. So all you do is just aspire to be big and whatever it takes for you to get there, you just keep doing it and just keep pushing. pushing. Okay. Yeah. So at any point, have you had to like forget about a certain dream you had growing up? So many. Like, first of all, I wanted to be a very bad artist. Like, I could draw, I could draw very well when I was growing up. So I wanted to be an artist, but at some point growing up, I discovered that I could dance very well. So I started dancing, and I did still retain my drawing skills but the support was not forthcoming like everybody was just there do your thing just do your thing so at the point where we started knowing that the dancing thing was actually not the end thing anymore I started discovering that I could actually sing so I believe if I had gotten the support I needed when I was actually putting my passion in dancing, I wouldn't have switched to singing. Okay. So at some point, I had to let go of my dancing skills and my Artistic. drawing skills. Yeah, so. so do you think like in any time you go back to it to pursue that dream, to yeah. make it reality for you? Saying pursue, I really don't think I'll be pursuing a career when it comes to drawing or when it comes to dancing. It's more like something I can just do for fun in the future. Like I should just stay one day and just dance. I know that okay I used to dance and I'm a very good dancer, I can just dance. But I'm actually chasing the career as a musician more than any other thing. So we're not like in the middle future expecting an art gallery from Pizza Etic. You know you know, the future has a lot, has a lot to offer. Sometime in the future, if I discover that I 
I can actually make something out of being a dancer or having an art gallery for dancers and the rest of us. I think I would probably venture into it if it's actually creative stuff for for the society and myself as well. So I wouldn't say I won't or I wouldn't or I would. So we're just looking up. So just the allow the future to unfold yeah, itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So has there been any time in your life that you wished your dad was this badass millionaire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know every average kid had yeah, 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 wished. That. You know, well, I would say, I'm not saying I'm not happy where I am, and I love my current dad, like, I love my family, but at some point, I was wishing my present dad was good, hey. like, he was to be the Otedola or the big man, because I knew if my dad was in such position, I probably wouldn't have been struggling as I am now, because I know him, a very nice guy, he's a guy man. So, <laughs> so yeah, to, yeah, to some point, yeah, I was wishing I'd grown up in a very rich or wealthy family. Yeah, I believe every, every average kid had that. Yeah, same, every yeah, average yeah, kid had that so at some wish. Point, had the... Yeah, at some point I was wishing and that was a multi billion million. So if you had anything to change your childhood, what would that be? Nothing. I don't think, yeah, I know I made a couple of mistakes, I made so many mistakes, but I believe those mistakes are mistakes that actually spring me up or which actually spring me up to this particular phase that I am in now. So changing anything will be like altering whatever the future has to be. Okay. So I wouldn't want to alter whatever the future holds. So because I believe the future is very, very large and it has a lot in stock. For yeah. Me. And through the processes, I've been seeing like I've gone through so many processes and I've seen the benefits of being like this or like that when I was small and I've seen the changes it has actually brought my way. So I don't think there's anything I would rather want to change. Rather, I want to improve on whatever it is I didn't do. Or I was lacking behind. So I'm mm -hmm. cool with my childhood, whatever experience I had. So let's go to when you were trying to build your brand. Did you have fears of what's going to come, like the outcome of becoming an entrepreneur? Like you don't have an assurance that someone is going to patronize you like for the first one month. So Okay, on that the the initial the initial fear I had was I was already promoting myself as a musician to all of my fans, all of my friends, anybody who knew me then, like who knows me. The only thing you know about me was ah, this one, a uh, uh, musician, an uh, artist, uh, IS, yeah, IS, the only thing else from I uh, knew they do fine boy. So there was no <laughs> serious part, no business part of me. I was coming. So at some point, I got into school, like the university, and the support, the financial support was no longer coming as it was when I was in secondary school. So I had to like stand up for myself, knowing that I now have challenges to face and the rest. But I was caught up with the whole scenario of trying to tell people that I do a different thing aside from music and how do I start introducing myself as a footwear maker to people I've already introduced myself as a musician to like how do they start you. balancing yeah because they will definitely there's going to be this diversion of attention like people no longer want to be seeing you as an artist they want to see you as their shoe plug and the rest well I had to do what I had to do I had yeah. to be who I wanted to be and do No shame with the hustle. <laughs> so as a hustler, you just have to clear your mind off anything called shame or anything because you still have to put money in your pocket. Yeah, so food to, has to be on the table. I swear down. So I had to do what I had to do. And I had to be who I am right now, like 
a shoe maker. No, actually a shoe, so a shoe cobbler. So it's actually a lucrative job as well. So it's actually cool. So like what are the expectations for younger ones that want to go into this shoe cobbling business? What what were the challenges to face when you started like uh, what are they supposed to expect? Yeah, first of all, whatever whatever challenge you face should be your mindset towards anything you want to do. That's the first challenge you face whenever you want to do something. It's the mindset behind it. If you're actually doing this thing because you would love to do this thing, it's not actually because everybody's doing it and everybody's just making something out of it and you don't know the struggle in it. So I believe before you do anything, you have to first of all learn to love whatever it is. I'm a crafty person, so I actually love doing crafts. So for me, learning footwear making was actually like one of my practical experiments. I can do this thing, I can draw shapes, so why can't I just fix this thing? So I actually decided to, okay, since I could do this, we just venture into this. So the only challenges I had was when I was starting, I needed to buy some machines and some other couple of items. So which needed money. So to some point, I, there's always a way to tackle all those challenges. You can actually merge with somebody and you keep saving up till you get your materials and the next you move to your own space. It's actually a good idea to start up for those who want to start up. So there's actually not much challenges. It's just your mindsets and the goals you're trying to achieve. So if you actually want to be a cobbler, you have to put your mind into it. And I believe you're going to achieve if you wanna. And it's a very good business because everybody wants to look sharp when it comes to footwear. Yeah, true. So if you're actually good at what you do, you're gonna excel. Though we have a lot of cobblers, but there's still a standard difference between cobblers and cobblers. <laughs> so, so it's actually a good job. It's actually a good career if somebody wants to venture into it. Okay. Yeah. So, like, where do you see yourself in the next five years? Mm, I see myself somewhere spectacular, like somewhere bigger than what I'm even expecting. Because I'm, I'm really someone who, who looks up to the future with a very high view, and I know it holds a lot. I wouldn't want to say because I wouldn't even know. But I know I see myself somewhere great in five years. Yeah. Okay. So back to music. Are there challenges? A lot of challenges in music. A whole lot of challenges in music. All boils down to the finance part, which is the major challenge. But aside the challenge of finance, there are so many things that, as an artist, you need to know before talking about the finance part. The challenge is we should be, number one, self-development. You have to develop yourself when it comes to this music because it's not all about finance. We have a lot of people who has actually put in a lot when it comes to finance and it still didn't happen for them. And they still didn't get their A games. So that aside, there are so many challenges, personal challenges, financial challenges, societal challenges. So it's all what whoever who wants to be a musician has to know. There are so many challenges being a musician. First of you being a songwriter, it's actually challenging. You just you yeah. just don't write anything. Just don't come and start singing. You have to think about it. You have to think. You have to relate to society. You have to know what the society is all about. Sure. You have to read into the minds of people, like a vast population of people. You have to know what they love and you have to know the surroundings you are. Like, you don't start singing a love song in a society where everybody's thinking about money, money, money. You want to start singing love to them. They'll just they'll take you on serious. Yeah. So you have to know the person it's you are, you have to grow, you have to know how to grow your brand as a musician too. So there's a lot of challenges 
ranging from money, personal development, societal challenges. There's a whole lot when it comes to music, which is just not easy. It's not easy. Okay. It's been very lovely having you here today. And to my extreme viewers, thank you for sticking with us this far on Dream Big and Think Bigger. We have to go on the short commercial break right now. We'll see you in five. Please stay tuned. So it is. So please think big today. Welcome back. So quick one. We'll be going on language challenge. Yes, because we're streaming exclusively on Calabari TV, and Calabari TV is all about culture, and our culture is indeed our heritage. So therefore, we have to show and showcase our culture. So you say five words in Akwaibom, but I'll say five words in my dialect, which is Calvary. Okay. And then I'll take a wild guess, and you take a wild guess for me, and we'll see who wins. Okay. Okay. So you go first. Okay. I don't know if you to go first, but since you're gracing me, and let me think of several ones. What should I say? Abadi. Abadie is a greeting, right? Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's good morning or good afternoon, but I know it's a greeting. Yeah, it's actually a greeting, but you got it wrong. It's like, how are you? Okay. Or how is it? Okay, well, when they said Abadie, they used to say idiom wrong. I don't know. It's Abadie, idiom wrong, which is how, how, how are you? I'm fine. Or how is it? It's okay. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So, my own is Tobara. I know this one is very simple because your mom is Calabar. Yeah, Tobara is like, how are you? She's like, how about you? Tobara is, how are you? Okay. So, you got that one. So <laughs> your lady. So, so, what if I say Didian Paul? It's actually a simple language. Like, Everybody should know that one. Yeah, well. I'm fine. No, the next one is come and eat, which is oh, actually oh a very good <laughs> language. So you're still wrong. Okay. Two, two. Two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Uh, uh, I'm not guessing my language. I'm looking for hard words to tell you so that you know it. <laughs> Um, it's so boy. Ah, very simple. <laughs> it's so boy is more like heaven's gifts coming from heaven. <laughs> Why is your mom from <laughs> So you came to our shy be in my own studio today. Wow, wow, wow. I'm shy, shy boy. <laughs> so, so I got it right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me, let me. Go down to the simpler ones. Okay, Dimi. Dimi. Okay. Um, help God help me. You seem not to be getting anyone. <laughs> How can I? So should I help you? Don't help me. I'll try. Um. Dimi, Dimi, Dimi. Man, I don't even know. Is it my own? It looks you like you doing a guess one. That means you don't know. It's, it's a white guess, sir. It's a white guess. Mm. Uh, you're not supposed to know. You, you're cheating because your mom is colorblind. You should have looked for evil language. I'm cutting evil too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what's the meaning? It means actually come here. Oh. Yes, Dimi. Okay, so. Last three. If, 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 
It should be five because I'm getting my you're losing mine and I'm getting yours. So what's Poco? Poco. Poco is more like wait. Poco is more like a veranda or a frontage. Mm? Something like a seafront or close to the front. I know it's something that has, it has to do with frontage. Either a seafront <laughs> or Okay, fine, you win, you win. So today on today's show <laughs> Pizzo is the winner. Pizzo Etuk is the winner on Language Challenge. Wow. He won me. Can, can you believe? How rude. Coming to my own studio to win me. That was stars too. <laughs> oh, he stars did. Stars winners. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for having us today on your TV screen. We will hope to see you next time. Please stay tuned. Same time, same station. And you can follow us on Instagram at Calabari TV. You can follow us on Facebook at Calabari TV. You can follow us on YouTube at Calabari TV. Then I, my personal page is Hilly Kenneth on Instagram, Hills Kenneth on Facebook, and Hilly Kenneth on Twitter. Can't wait to see you till we meet again. Peace, and don't forget to always dream in and take me.